Hello, everybody. Good morning, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons. And I know, a Saturday morning without G.I. Joe? What's this world coming to? But today we have this. Spin Masters Champion Collections League of Legends Z. And I know this guy is based off of a video game. But today on Netflix, we are getting the release of Act 2 of Season 1 of Arcane League of Legends, the animated series on Netflix. Now, I just watched the first three episodes a few days ago, and I gotta say, not knowing anything about the video game, I love this show. We've only seen three episodes so far. It was three episodes enough that got me hooked. I can't wait to watch the next three episodes tonight. Episode three of this show is probably the most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen on TV. It's just so, so good, and I'm really excited about the show. So I'm really excited about these figures now, even more so than I was when we took a look at Thresh last month, if you check that out. Now, Zed here is number two in the line, in the Spin Masters line of the Champion Collection for League of Legends. You can see he has number two on the side of his box here. He has this, this icon portrait, this avatar portrait up top. But up front, I really like the packaging of these things. And I actually kept the packaging for Thresh once we opened them up and we got to take a look at them. Because I really like even like the, the shatter and the plastic right here. Carries around to the side. Has a promo shot on back. And right here he has a little bio where it says, Zed, the master of shadows, ruthless and without mercy. Zed is the leader of the Order of Shadow with the power to destroy anything he sees as a threat to his homeland of Ionia. So, he's obviously some sort of big armored ninja type character, which, love me some ninja type characters, so that's going to be cool too. But is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Are there good guys and bad guys in League of Legends? There's really no way to know. So up top, we just have that avatar picture again, League of Legends, his name, on the bottom, just a barcode, and that's about it. So, we're going to open this up, and we're going to be careful, because I keep the packaging for these guys, because I kept it for Thresh, and I really like to display these guys in the box. You even have your first edition sticker down here. So, without further ado, let's get this open, and let's take a look at the League of Legends Champion Series by Spin Masters, Zed. Okay, so as we found out with Thresh last time, the easiest and best way to go at these guys is to come in through the top. You just open this, and then you open this, and then this cardboard tray slides out, and there you have your figure. And then it's real easy to put him back in the box. Okay, friends, here he is, Zed out of the box. And as I said with Thresh, Spin Master has a really good start. As far as I know, this is their first real endeavor into six-inch collector's figures. I know they've been doing a lot of uh, three and three-quarter inch figures, especially for Batman. But I think this is their first time they've tried to do a collector-style six-inch figure. So... Much like Thresh, there's a lot of good stuff about this, but there's also a lot of room for improvement that hopefully Spin Master will move on, because I would like to see this line continue. So the first thing we're going to do before we get into anything else is, as we always do, we're going to put the tape measure to him, and we can see that Zed, to the top of his head, is six and a half inches tall. So he's going to scale roughly with your Hasbro, Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe figures, things like that, which we will take a look at later in the size comparison. Now... Let's get down to it. Let's take a look at the articulation. And this is going to be one of the areas where Spin Master needs to, needs to improve a little bit. So let's take a look at that. So starting with the head first, you're probably going to figure out real soon, even just by looking at it, that this high collar is going to hinder head articulation. And you would be right. Because the head can move side to side but it does get caught up on that collar. Now, this collar is a soft rubber. It's not a hard plastic, so there is some give to it if you try and push his head to the left or right to extreme sides, but it is stopping it from getting like some over-the-shoulder looks, things like that. Also, it doesn't really... His head doesn't really go up, and it doesn't really go down. It feels like it's more on a swivel than a ball joint of anything, so it really just gets this side-to-side... And obviously there's not 
any real tilt. Now, even though the collar is blocking his head articulation, amazingly enough, his, his garment, his vestments, aren't blocking too much of anything else. Because you see, he has these sleeves that overlay his shoulders, along with these armored pads up here. But it is a soft rubber, and it does rise. Come on, rise. It does rise out of the way of his arms, so you can get his arms up to about 90. So that's good. And they will do the full 360 spin. They are capable of doing a full 360 spin, but all this heavy rubber and that armor piece does get up into it. But he still has some pretty good movement of the arms up and down. Now, here is one of the first disappointments in the articulation. If you remember Thresh, Thresh was a single jointed figure that had a hinge and swivel at the elbow. Now, Zed has double jointed elbows and you can see, let's get this out of the way. And you can see he has some really good travel in there. But, if you lift this, you see that cut? It looks like there should be a bicep swivel in there, but there's nothing. It's all solid. The arm doesn't twist at all. It stays in this position, so that even whenever you're trying to put him in a neutral position, his arms are always going to be flailed out, splayed out like this. Whereas if there was a bicep swivel, you could sort of turn the arm in and cheat it a little bit. Or even, like... If he has his blades out, twist the arm to get like a forward blade type movement. But pretty much his arms are going to stay in this position. Now he does have... Focus. He does have wrist swivel. And his arms, his wrists do pivot in and out. Actually, they pivot out in and out really well. His gauntlet blocks his back pivot a little bit, but they do pivot in. Now these shoulder pieces up here... They do... This one isn't doing it. Well, this one popped off real easy. This one seems to be stuck on there pretty well. That these are different separate pieces that if you want them to stay on, which this one is doing, this one's moving and popping off a lot, I may have to get out some craggle and just make sure that stays in place. And let's put his blades back on. Now let's get his arms up. Arms up. Now, you can see he has a bit of a waist cut, an ab cut, right in here, just like Thresh did. And he has a little bit of waist movement, just like Thresh did. But also, just like Thresh, even though he has that cut in there, he doesn't have any crunch at all. The only place he really hinges forward and back is at the hips, where he, where he meets his legs. His waist doesn't twist exceptionally well, but when you combine this with this... You can cheat and get some side looks. You're not going to do a full 360. You're not... Well, maybe if you loosen that up a little bit. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it's going. Okay, it's really stiff because this is bending. And this is stiff up in here as well. But it does look like after some playing around, you can get some decent waist twist out of it. You just may not want to hold him in that position for too long because this might start to stretch. Now, coming down to the legs... I would really thought, especially looking at the picture on the back where this leg was moved and this leg was pretty static, I thought this was really going to traffic cone it, but it doesn't. There's a slit in it, and the leg comes up to the side on both sides. You can see it goes a little bit past 90, so there's some really good uh, hip articulation. The only thing I wish is that this side came down just a little bit more, just a little bit more, Spin Master, to cover up that cut in the in the ball joint or in the hip here that would have been really cool if this would have just come down just a little bit just to hide that a little now he does have even though he doesn't have a bicep swivel he does have his thigh swivel okay and he has some really good articulation with these double jointed knees and then no boot cut so there's nothing there and then his ankle goes back his ankle goes forward but there's no forward facing pin there's no rock. So, you see what I mean? That some of the articulation that's there works. And it works really well. Like the elbows, the knees, the wrist swivel. That all works really well. The, the thigh cut. I really like all of the, the, the joints that are working. This could definitely use some work. It would be really nice to be able to get a crunch out of him. To like get him to crunch forward a little bit. The head... 
the head is what it is. I understand with this design, and I don't think it's a fault of the figure. I think it's definitely a fault of the design that is holding the head in place. And it's not that the design is bad because it looks really good. It's just you have to accept things like that. The arms, to me, are the, the, biggest, the, the biggest offense. That there should be a bicep swivel in here, especially with Thresh when he had, like I said, the single jointed hinge and swivel elbow to not give him a bicep swivel to get some more movement out of these arms. That's especially for like a ninja type character. That's, that's a little unforgiving to me. Now we're going to take a look at the sculpt of Zed. And honestly, just like with Thresh, I think the sculpt is where Spin Master is really excelling with these figures. Because first of all, look at this head sculpt for Zed. I have no idea what he looks like in the in the game. I have no idea if this is a true representation. But I do know that this looks really good with the grating on the mouthpiece on the on the visor here. That white in the eyes, in the red eyes, that's not from my lights. That's painted in there to give it like this internal glow of these red eyes with these white pupils. They're a little off center, but that's fine. I like the gold up here in this horn piece on his helmet. These shoulder pads, I think, are really nicely detailed. The armor he has here, these different, this different two-tone color with this gray and this silver, really giving it some depth, really giving it some detail. And then this reddish pink, I don't know, maroon, crimson, whatever you want to call it, uh, vestments that he's wearing. I really like that. Once again, let's pop these off and you can take a look at his bracers that it's a shame that they put these holes in the bracers for these. I almost wish this would have been a clip on instead of a peg in so that you could take these off and show the design of the bracers here as well. His hands being clawed the way they are. I really like that. And then the boots. I really like these boots. The look and the design of these boots. And then whenever you get, if you take a real good look at this, whenever you get to anything that's metal, like especially up here in his helmet, it even has it on these plastic pieces on the side, his blades and his boots. It has this texturing, this weathering to make it look old, to make it look used, like it has history behind it. I really appreciate that. And these paint apps down here are just spot on. And then you go over to the back, and let me see if I can get a reflection of it. I have no idea what this symbol is, and I don't care, because it looks awesome. It is, it's faded on purpose, it's weathered in there, like once again, like the armor is weathered and faded and looks old and used. The symbol on his back is the same way. I really, I just love the look of this whole thing. And I honestly think that's one of the things that saves this figure. Like, with the articulation issues, having this gorgeous sculpt and these flawless paint apps, I think, is one of the things that's really saving this figure. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the accessories. And I consider his wrist blades an accessory because they do come off. And as you saw before, he has these two big holes in his gauntlet. And he has these two pegs on the blade itself so that they can just peg right into his gauntlet. And I know before I said I wish that they would have had a clip or something instead of having holes in the gauntlet here, because those are kind of ugly and it would be cool to have the gauntlet closed off. But I remember from Captain America with the shield and having that clip on there, that sometimes the clip starts to spread, it gets loose, sometimes it cracks, and it doesn't really sit right on there sometimes, that maybe this is the best way to do it other than having an entire forearm that pops off and then pop a new one back on. I don't know. It's what they have, so it may not be as bad as I had originally thought. But we take a look at these blades, and I do like the design of these blades. And I understand that these are designed after the, uh, the video game. But, and I really like how the gold here is faded in some spots, and it's not completely... It's not as heavy in some areas. It gives it an uh, an aged look, a weathered look, a battle-worn look. And even the, the paint of the gray in some spaces, like the, the paint app on the figure and on the accessories is so good that I have to think that this is on purpose, how the paint is kind of thinned out there and it's kind of scraped away. The only thing about these that I would have liked to have seen is for the blades here, 
to be the same silver as his armor instead of the dull gray carrying over. Like the dark gray with the dull gray and the gold for right here would have been really good. But these blades I feel like should have been the silver of his armor. If for nothing else to make the blades stand out more, make them look a little bit more dangerous, make them pop, and complete the whole aesthetic. But let's take these, let's pop these back on. Set him down. And then the other accessories that he comes with are these two big shuriken. And, I mean, these are really big shuriken. And I kind of like how they're convexed a little bit. And I don't know if they're supposed to be that way or if they're just... Uh, no, they're probably just bent from packaging. So I should probably flatten those out. But once again, they have that same aesthetic. They have that gray with that weathered look on the paint job. So it gives them a textured look, a weathered look, like battle-worn. The only thing I would have liked to have seen is right here on the triangle of the shuriken. I think it would have been really, it would have really just finished it off, tied the whole thing together. If this would have been painted gold, like on his shoulder pads and on the blades themselves. Although if this is done after the video game and the video game uh, skin isn't painted like that, I can understand why they didn't but I think it would have tied the whole thing together. Now on the back of these big shuriken, you have these holes right here. And when I was turning him Zed around, you might have noticed that he has these pegs. And these are so that you can just pop the shuriken right onto his back so he can carry everything on him. And it's kind of neat because if you position them just right, you can kind of hide that he has them, which, you know, Ninja. So I really like the look of these. I like how he can wear them. They're really big, but hey, video game. So I like that. I like that a lot. And then finally, he comes with this display stand with the L etched on it, single foot peg right there, and then this notch up here at the front of the stand. And we saw the same stand with Thresh, and I really like this stand, these stands that they come with. I like how they're elevated, and they look like daises, like display daises. I think that just adds to the whole aesthetic, to the whole display potential of these figures. I really like these stands. Now for a size comparison, here he is next to fellow League of Legends champion Thresh. You can tell from the eye line that Thresh is a little bit taller than Zed, so I'm assuming Zed is going to be the standard size, and Thresh is just a little bit bigger. Here he is next to fellow Shadow Warriors, G.I. Joe Classified, Snake Eyes, and Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. Here he is beside McFarlane Toys, Mortal Kombat 11, Scorpion, and DC Multiverse Azrael. And finally, as always, here he is beside Jazzwares, Wicked Cool Toys, Spartan Collection, Master Chief, and Cat. So I definitely understand that this collection is a mileage will vary type of thing from person to person. I understand that some people aren't going to be into this, that the limited articulation is going to put them off. I understand there are some people that are going to really dig the look of these characters, the sculpt, the paint app, and the display potential, especially being able to put it back in a box that looks so good. And I also understand that there's going to be people like me that just for whatever reason got hooked on this line in as few as two figures. I like it because these are unique. These look different from most things that are on the shelf right now. They feel different. They have a great aesthetic to them. And I know I'm only talking about two figures. Believe me, I understand that. But they just have an aesthetic, a look, a sculpt, the paint app, everything. Just to look at them, I'm like, I don't have anything like this right now. And I like that. I like that this is something new, something unique. Having said that, there is the issue that this is the beginning of something, and Spin Masters does need to fix a few things here and there. Mainly the articulation, especially in the arms, especially in the ankles. The ankle rock I can almost forgive because I know a lot of lines skip on the ankle rock, but not having a bicep swivel to me seems to be the biggest offender of the whole thing you really lose a lot of possibilities by getting rid of that bicep swivel. I just feel like that's something that needed that needs to happen. But the sculpt of it, the paint app, the look, even his vestments, his tunic, how soft of a rubber it is that it doesn't really get in the way of the articulation, I appreciate all of that. 
I appreciate that overly designed display stand. I think that's a really cool add-on. In addition to the 6-inch line, Spin Masters also has a 3 and 3 quarter inch line, but I'm not really into the 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, so I haven't picked any of those up. But there is one in the 3 and 3 quarter line that I really want to get in the 6-inch line, and that's Jinx. Come on, Spin Masters, you gotta give us a 6-inch figure of Jinx with a big pink minigun. We gotta get that, especially how important she's going to be to the series that's playing. And that's the other thing, the other reason that I think I'm hooked into this line so soon is that the series has really opened up the mythology of this for me. I don't know how much the series follows the video game. I don't know if the series even does follow the video game, or if the video game, because I think it's a Battle Royale game, even has much of a storyline to it. But I really, really want Jinx in the six-inch figure, so hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully, Wave 2, the next wave, will get Jinx. Check out the show, check out the figures, let me know what you think. If you do play the game, let me know how off the show goes from the game, because I have no doubt that it goes off from the game. So until we get our Jinx, play well, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching. And enjoy the show!